We're joined by the head coach of the Normal Community Ironman, Jason Drangwitz. And coach, coming off an impressive victory Friday night, just your overall impressions on how your team played. Well, I mean, really proud of our guys, proud of our players, proud of our coaches. I think it all it all came from, you know, our start this year, in my opinion, has come from having a really good winter, spring and summer, and then been able to stack a lot of really good days of practice together, which, uh, as you know, when, when you practice well, those things show up on the games on Friday nights, and uh, we had a really good week of practice. I thought we had a lot of energy. We were really focused, had a lot of juice to play, and we, we were really physical. And those things always tend to lend well to play well. Did not expect that type of victory at all. Normal West, too talented, uh, too well, too good schematically, and really well coached. But uh, proud of our kids to be able to, to come away with that type of victory for sure. Talk about playing a rival, especially a cross-time rival. Mm -hmm. and just Is there any change in preparation that goes into a game like that? I know the motivation is not a problem at all, but maybe even bringing them back a little bit so they can focus on what they need to do to, uh, play by play to make things happen. Yeah, I think the message for us, every, every our message in weekly preparation is always the same. We're always focused on that opponent. Obviously, the prep changes based on scheme. Uh, our big thing that we talked about all week was the ability to keep our emotions in check. I mean, that was a constant thing we were harping on with our guys. Uh, I think we did an okay job of that. Um, but we did have nine penalties for over 100 yards, which uh, you can't you can't do. That's gonna uh, can come back to haunt you. Uh, but we also want them to be excited about playing in that type of atmosphere. Not everybody gets to play in a cross down rivalry where there's 4,000 people there and everybody's hyped about it and super excited. I mean, you look at the stands on both sides. That's something really cool. I know I never got to play in anything like that growing up. And you want them to enjoy and because those are the things that they're going to remember. Um, and. Uh, they're playing against guys they've probably grown up with, played baseball with, played other sports with, <laughs> gone to camp, been at the pool with, so that makes it unique as well. So uh, we want them to keep our emotions in check. We also want them to enjoy those opportunities because not everybody gets them. Got a number of guys step up, juniors coming into the lineup this year. Who's most impressed you maybe from that junior class so far? I think if you look at from the different sides of the ball, you know, offensively, obviously, you know, Marquand Gary's had a really dynamic beginning to his season. Uh, which again comes from his off-season preparation. Uh, Reed Johnson and Braden Mazanowski on the offensive line as juniors have stepped up and, and played really well at different times. Inconsistent a little bit just because they're young and they're still figuring it out. Quinn Butler at center is a newcomer even as a senior. Um, Alex Binion playing tight end. So I think there's been a lot of guys that have stepped up offensively that allowed us to play. Kyle's played better. Um, uh, than he did last year to start. Defensively, we returned so many guys with a lot of experience, but Jace Wilson has started outside linebacker for us, done a really nice job. Uh, but then everybody else are guys that uh, played a lot of snaps for us last year. So a lot of good. Will Castro has done an excellent job in the kicking game as a sophomore. So, uh, And there's all sorts of little guys contributing on special teams, juniors that we're really high on. Yeah, Coach, talk about Will just a little bit. I know big shoes to fill, and but he's done a terrific job so far this season. Yeah, I mean, that was a big concern going into the offseason yeah. after having that security blanket of Ryan Milmore for mm -hmm. basically four years kicking. And we were excited about Will uh, kicking as a freshman, and we were excited to see what he could do this summer, but he injured his knee. So he was unable to kick all summer. So he's still kind of round out getting the form, but he, he's done a nice job. Uh, uh, he's only going to get better because I think he's still pretty raw. He's still playing soccer, uh, but I think he's only missed one extra point. Um, he's not punting for us right now, but doing a good job in kickoffs. A uh, little bit inconsistent, but not due to lack of effort and trying. So we're excited about him that we should have a really good kicker the next three years. Uh, three games, three blowout wins. We, expe we expected week one's matchup with Sacred Heart Cup to be closer than 54-14 to 14 in last week's game against West to be a little more back and forth. So I know you've talked repeatedly about um, taking the season one game at a time, but a, th a third of the way through the regular season, how have the team's goals changed? Well, one, I would agree that we didn't expect to have those type of lopsided wins against those really good opponents that were well coached. And two, I don't think the goals, I don't think anything's changed. Our goal is still to win every week, go 1-0 and that week. Uh, our goals are to be to win the Big 12 championship every year, to make the playoffs, and hopefully have the ability to make it run the playoffs. That doesn't change regardless of what week of the season is, uh, who we were playing, anything like that. And I think you can get yourself into trouble if you change week to week. You know, you got to be the same team in week one 
or in week nine or week, week four, week nine, week 10 that you were in week one with the same approach. If your approach always changes and you're inconsistent, then your message is inconsistent and how can you expect your team to be? So we've tried to stay on point. I mean, if you came to a Monday team meeting, it's it's the same process of here's what we want to do. We're going to prepare accordingly. It's about this team. It's about playing to our standard. It's about putting ourselves in the best position to win a Big 12 title and make the playoffs. You're also in an interesting part of your season where it's rival with West, Peoria High. We'll talk about them in a few moments. And then you got Bloomington coming up. So it's an interesting stretch. It is a week-by-week -week process right now. Yes, you have to stay in that week-by-week -week process. If you get caught looking ahead, you're going to get burned that current week. And uh, every week presents its own unique challenges. Um, and last week was a unique challenge playing Normal West, the team that beat us and pretty much physically handed it to us the year before. Then you come right back and play Peoria High, who's talented, big, physical, dynamic, well-coached. So you got to be locked in on them. And then you come back for homecoming, you're playing Bloomington, which is a historic rivalry, one that we uh, one that we love to play in, and I know Scott and their staff love to play in as well, but uh, we'll, we'll worry about them hopefully uh, after a good day on Friday. We'll start worrying about them on Saturday. So unique to describe Peoria, the way they play might mm -hmm. be one of the most unique teams in the state, if not the entire country, the way they play offense and defense with the aggressiveness they play with. Correct. I mean, I, I love what they do. Uh, we have a lot of respect for their program and their coaching staff. Uh, on how they go about doing things. You know, sometimes I think people only want to talk about them being big and dynamic and athletic, but their players execute their game plans on all in all three phases to a high level, and they're extremely well coached. Um, so offensively for us, when they're playing they're basically 11 across, they tweak it a little bit and playing covers here all the time. You really got to be locked in your assignment. It makes you change some things, what you do. Offensively, they go fast. Uh, they can run the ball. They got big physical linemen. They got dynamic tailbacks, and then they got receivers that they can throw the ball to. Then on special teams, they onside kick every time, which you, you have to practice and prepare for. Uh, you know, last year we lost by four scores, and we gave them four expert possessions on onside kick recoveries so they don't they punt from their offense so yet you're, you're worried about their offense and now all of a sudden they punt you can't get anybody back so uh, they provide a lot of challenges for us uh, so far we've gotten off to a good start and prepping uh, but I know our kids are excited sure. about that they've been really locked into what we're trying to do so far I'm sure one of the challenges with their ability to be able to run the ball and spread you out probably getting to the quarterback is one of those challenges that you definitely face in putting pressure on their quarterback Friday night. Yeah, you have to. I mean, you don't want to let him sit back there and give you a ton of time. He's got great arm talent. He's a three-year starter for them. Uh, and if you do that, he's got the guys out wide that can make, people, can make people miss, can get open or vertical threats. But there are also threats anywhere on the field uh, if you throw a now screen or a bubble screen. So we gotta, we got to be able to change up our coverages a little bit, try to confuse them. Then we got to get pressure on him and get people in his face and, and hopefully make him make some poor decisions uh, if we can. Real quick, did you just say that they onside kick every time? Yes, they do. Okay, that, okay, that just threw me off a little bit. Um, so, obviously, last Friday you said that we had nine penalties for 100 yards. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that was just because of the rivalry matchup? You know, emotions are high. And, or was that just like a lack of di uh, discipline? And how are you working to address those issues? I, th I think it's a combination of both, BJ. I think it was due to the emotions of the game, but I also do think it's a little bit of lack of discipline and something that we've emphasized. We were, I, To be honest, I, I really struggle what the right way is to handle that as a head coach. Do you, we run our team? Does that make you stop from getting penalties? I don't know that it does. We just constantly drive the message that we have to be steady in our emotions whether things are good or bad you can get excited but you got to get back to level really quickly and if things go poorly you got to get back up to level really quickly so um, i think it's a big deal because in big games a 15-yard penalty here or there a close game late in the second half that'll get you beat and uh, I've seen a lot of teams get beat by it, and we've gotten beat by it in the past. So we're addressing it every day about emotions in check, um, but you're still dealing with high school 16-, 17-, 18-year-old boys, and uh, sometimes, um, not for a good reason, they, they just lose that control for just a little bit. Back to the special teams a little bit. Um, do, does it change your personnel, who you're putting in on special teams, based upon on-sites kick where a normal team might – kick long, does that change who you have on the field at that time? Yeah, now, we, I mean, week to week we have our hands team uh, mm -hmm. together, so we have guys on there. So basically what we've done is stayed, taken our hands team and adjusted a little bit and put some additional personnel onto the field. So we want to have our best ball handling guys and some physical guys on there to, to, to kind of protect 
the pressure that they give with the onsite. So it does uh, require us to change personnel, not drastically, but on the flip side, it requires you to practice it more and take time to prepare and how we want to go about it. We try to scheme it up as best we can. I thought I had it schemed up really well last year, and then they recovered it four times. So um, uh, we made a couple subtle changes to it this year, and hopefully we'll execute better. You talk about them having 11 guys on the line of scrimmage. Mm. What kind of adjustments are made there when you're seeing that situation? Maybe for the first time and maybe the only time you're going to see that all season long. Well, it, it changes your pass on in your run game concepts if you're running inside or outside zone. And you really got to be sound with how you're moving. Your guys will crease you into leakage. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. In the pass game, it, you really got to shore up your protection and do some things differently to protect the quarterback. Now, uh, and then everything's man, so you have to run man beaters. You have to be able to get off the line. You have to be able to stack guys when you get open. So our goal is to try to shore up what run game we think is best effective against them, be able to protect Kyle to give him chances to make plays in the passing game to Marquand, Ivo, Caden Hardeman, Cole Morstadter, Dexter, those guys, Tommy Davis. So it requires you to tweak and change some things, but – if you can win a few spots or get a crease here, especially in the run game, uh, there's no one left. And if you can win in the passing game, you're, there's no safeties back there, same thing. Uh, they're a little bit more multiple than they have been in the past. They've shown some 2D safeties with guys up, some different looks. So um, we'll have to be prepared for that. But it definitely is a unique challenge. How much time did Kyle see against Peoria at the quarterback position a year ago? And yeah. will that time help him a little bit? I would think so. I mean, last year we were playing a two-quarterback system when we played them. We were yeah. still rolling out Brady, uh, Oxton in certain scenarios, and Kyle in certain scenarios. And that was really his first varsity mm -hmm. playing time was against Peoria High week four last year, which is not an easy task. And I believe he threw for four touchdowns mm -hmm. that game. Um so I think it's going to benefit him tremendously, but it's a new game, new year, uh, and he just has to really one take care. Of, we got to protect him, but then he's got to make good decisions and take care of the football. Um, last week, the team seemed to be executing in all three phases of the game. From your perspective as a coach, where do you think the team really excelled? And besides penalty, where do you look for the penalties? Where do you look for them to improve? So offensively, I thought we really excelled at. Um, making the correct reads in the passing game and in the running game. I do think we need to clean some things up um, on the details of route running and, and in pass protection. Defensively, I thought we were just really assignment sound. I mean, we were playing base defense, like the defense we installed the first day of summer. We were playing that a majority of the game, which was nice. Uh, we did a good job of pressuring the quarterback. We didn't get let anybody get loose behind us. And uh, when we tackled well and ran the football. Special teams, other than one kickoff return that we let get out, I thought we were really good at being physical, running down the field, playing hard and playing fast, and a, a backwards punt that we, that we had. We blamed Kyle on that one. Uh, but those things are good. I think we need to continue. To, there's always a room for improvement. we got to get a line better. we got to run our routes better. we got to take first steps better. We can always play more physical. Uh, we can always play with more energy. And then we have to keep our emotions in check. Now, a couple of those penalties I do think were poor calls, um, if you look at them, them on film. But some of them were, were, were legitimate, and we have, to, we have to take care of those. So, Coach, what do you think the keys are to get a victory? Uh, well, as a special teams corner, I think the first thing is we can't give them extra possessions. We have to recover the football and onside kick uh, for two reasons. One, not to give them the ball back, but to give us the ball with a short field because we'd be getting the ball around the 50 every time. Um, offensively, I think we got to be able to run the football and get some creases in the run game, and then we got to keep Kyle clean and allow him to make plays to our receivers, which I know that all sounds cliche because that's what we have to run the football, protect the quarterback, but really when they're up like that, you have to do those things. Defensively, we have to, number one, be aligned correctly and identify the different little unique personnel groupings that they have with extra linemen and things like that. Two, uh, we got to execute post-snap technique with great eyes. We got to run to the football and we have to tackle them. We have to get them down on the first tackle and we got to get guys the football so they can't get loose and uh, take plays at the house because they have four to five guys that can score from anywhere on the field well coach uh, thanks for your time and good luck tonight awesome thank you guys appreciate you